going on, everybody? It's your buddy, it's your pal, Spaz Phoenix, the YWC Reality Check. You don't see my pretty sexy face, so you know I'm not alone. We're here to talk about Extreme Rules, which is actually more like mundane rules. Sorry that this is the show. The Guap- Sorry the Guapo's the one uh, coming back on this one. Kristen's here as well. Say what's up, guys. Sorry, that was a really lame joke. It's what I do. <laughs> this is true. Hi, guys. What's up, boss? <laughs> No, no oh. intro for Guapo. You're like, Kristen is here. Say hi, everyone. I was introducing oh, yeah, Guapo when you time. cut me off with the boo. But anyway, yeah. Guapo isn't dead. <laughs> so we're here to oh, talk... No, he... There we go. This is what happens when there's three of us. Here to talk about Extreme Rules. And I'm going to start this off like I start off every preview video. Guys, how excited are we for Extreme Rules? Uh, when's uh, Money in the Bank? <laughs> <laughs> when is t- I don't I don't hate it as much as you t- you two do. I feel like if you just looked at the cards minus the kendo stick on a pole match, it's like this looks like it might be an all right show. Look, but the I'm only, not really like excited about any of it. The only redeeming factor of that kendo stick in a pole match is that Bay's in it. That's the only reason that it's okay. Alexa Bliss on my pole match. I've already said it. Pretty much. Oh, no. <laughs> the only All thing right. I'm excited about is to watch Finn Balor win. Uh, is my we'll, hope and dream. We'll get there. Anyways, guys, like we did last time we did a tackle, we are doing what I've called the pay-per-view pick em. Myself, Guapo, Christian, uh, Mizark10 in the comments actually was nice enough to join us last time. Basically, it's a prediction thing. We've got six matches, which means there's going to be six predictions. You rank your predictions based on how confident you are in them. Whatever prediction you're most confident in is going to be number six. Whatever prediction you're least confident in or don't give a shit about is going to be number one. So Christian, Guapo, myself, we're all going to give our predictions and obviously the typical conversation that we do. You guys can join in in the comment section below. Let me say, if you're joining the game, you have to... You have to predict all six matches. You can't just come in the comment section and be like, well, Samoa Joe's going to win the main event and be part of the game, because that's not how it works. Also, what I didn't say for the first time around, if you're going to join the game, please include your Twitter tag in the comment section below so that I can include you when we keep score on Sunday night. Guapo? Are you going to announce who won last week? I was about to say that. Um, I literally said Guapo, and you cut me off. Guapo, despite the fact that he was not part of Tackle two weeks ago for TakeOver and for Backlash, was the first inaugural winner of the pay-per-view pick'em, and as I've been saying for the past couple of days, you win absolutely nothing. So congratulations. Thank you, sir. Look, I accept my title as the champion of the pick'ems, and I will gladly defend my championship this coming Sunday. So... There it is. Thank I did you. really well until SmackDown pay-per-view started. You Especially did very well on the brand watched. that you don't watch. <laughs> let's be real. You uh, let's say you and, I, and I'm doing tight. I'm doing tight, tight air quotes around when I say this. You got rid of the WWE network, so you haven't get, been watching SmackDown. She did. But yeah, no, you kicked ass. Uh, on the first night, unfortunately, the first pick'em was a combination of the two shows, and Guapo slaughtered all of us. Mizark, poor Mizark, standing in the comment <laughs> section there, trailing down, behind started. the whole damn time. Uh, but it was a lot of fun. Hope you, I hope uh, more of you guys join in. Uh, like I say, because a, a game of four people is fun. A game of five, six, ten people can only be better. So, as much as I don't really want to talk about this show, let's talk about Extreme Rules. And first of all. Raw sucks. I tried to do a little gimmick thing on my channel. Uh, most of you guys know this. I tried to do the Raw 3 count, where I could at least try to find three things nice to say about Raw. That lasted about four weeks, and then I said, fuck it. So you can tell how excited I am for Extreme Rules. Uh, what I'm assuming, big assumption on my part, what I'm assuming will be on the kickoff show is the mixed tag match. Sasha Banks and Rich Swan for reasons, versus Noam Dar and Alicia Fox. Can I give a positive for this match sure. first? Like, I, I feel like the one positive in this is that they're actually, you know, 
giving really sort of Alicia Fox a reason to be on 205 Live now because we have Sasha over there, and I know it's a temporary thing. And our biggest complaint when it comes to the Raw Women's Division is that they're really bad about not having more than one female storyline. So I feel like, you know, this is at least, like, trying. It's not trying very well, but it's it's trying. It's something. But it is kind of random and out of left field, and essentially the only reason it's needed to happen is because they insist on putting Alicia Fox on 205 Live. Yeah. I will say, to to, uh, piggyback on your point, uh, we always say SmackDown's better than Raw at showing that women can the women can have more than one story going on at once. On this pay- because of this match, on this pay per view, there's technically two matches where the women's division is represented, and two matches where the cruiserweight division is represented, and that's a plus. Other than that, I don't know. I, I was joking on Monday night when I heard about this match. You know, cruiserweight matches or the cruiserweight division matches have the purple ropes. The rest of them just wrestle on the normal Raw match thing. But if this is going to be a mixed tag, are we going to have purple and pink ropes? They'll probably do something lame like that, because it's WWE. Yeah, I think it'd be just purple. I would have been okay if they had just let... Because I think Alicia Fox and Sasha Banks are, are tied as far as their one-on-one matches go. I would have been okay with Sasha Banks versus Alicia Fox on Sunday. Because I don't really care. Rich Swan got thrown in at the absolute last minute. And as much as, yeah, it's kind of weird they throw Alicia Fox on with the Noam Dar thing and, and all that sort of thing, I like that they almost kind of sort of look like they're giving her a feud. So I would have rather the, seen the ladies uh, go at it. Yeah. Uh, I don't mind this either because I, I think it's going to be a good match. Uh, I like... I like that Sasha Banks isn't in the title picture right now. Right. I feel like we got a lot. And not not because I'm sick of her being in the title picture, but I feel like there needs to be some distance between her and the title after that god-awful trading back and forth with Charlotte that happened yeah. several months back. And I think Sasha Banks versus Alicia Fox is something they're saving for SummerSlam. I'm not, like, mm-hmm. I'm just sort of, sort of pulling that prediction out of my ass. But, I mean... If you want to go, like, because the Bailey, uh, we're t- we'll talk about this later, but Bailey's character is kind of flopping on the main roster, so baby faces. Uh, I kind of, I kind of thought she would, but I'll, we could get to that. Yeah, on, we, we, and we will. We get but, to- but baby face wise, Sasha Banks versus Alexa Bliss, that's your money. Uh, before the yeah. before the draft, when Alicia, when Raw stole Alicia Fox from SmackDown, I was always saying. If you're going to have, uh, like, bragging rights matches, like Raw versus SmackDown, you do Seth Rollins versus AJ Styles, and you do Sasha Banks versus Alexa Bliss. So I think that's a match that they're intentionally, like, pushing off to a big four pay-per-view. Also, it keeps mm-hmm. her away from the title, which is great. Also, uh, like we said, it shows that you can have a story that doesn't involve the women's title, which SmackDown was always great at. Yes. Uh since it doesn't really matter, and I'm just going to go right on into my prediction because I can't think of anything else to say, um, because I, I, I'm going to go with the baby faces only because I don't think this is going to go anywhere after this, so I'm going to go with uh, Banks and Swan, and it's my number two. Uh, I'm also going to go with Banks and Swan, but I rank it a lot higher. I feel like this is a definite win for them, so I ranked it up at five. Oh, wow. Uh... Myself, I, I I really haven't paid attention to this like little feud so much. So you haven't missed I'm anything. Going, I'm going back to Swan, but it's my number one. I'm gonna try and make it super obvious now. that I'm writing shit down as we go. Okay, so that's out of the way. The okay, I will say one other thing before we move on. Um, we talked about the women, but also the cruiserweight division. It's nice to see that the cruiserweight division is being represented more than once on a pay-per-view. Uh, still mm-hmm. kind of shitty that they're able to do that, and the only other major feud in the cruiserweight division, Tazawa and Brian Kendrick, has not seen pay-per-view yet, and it should. I agree, and I would not be surprised if they add it to, like, the pre-show card. <laughs> yeah. See that, like at the last minute. But that but that actually has built. Like that's been building for a couple of months. 
Like, if that, if, if this mixed tag was on the card, and that ended up on the pre-show, I'd be pissed. Because, like, okay, I know this goes hand-in-hand hand with it being a Raw show, but that would make the least sense in the world. I agree. Anyways, keeping in, in tune with the Cruiserweight division, we've got what I think is Dark Horse for Match of the Night, which is Austin Aries versus Neville in a submission match for the Cruiserweight Championship. I mean, can we already say that that's going to be a good match? We've seen it a couple times now. It's kind of like Sami Zayn versus Kevin Owens. We just know it's going to be good off the bat. But see, I don't. I, as much as they've sort of driven it into the ground, I didn't. I'm not as sick of it as I am uh, with the Owens and Zayn thing. Oh no, I'm not sick of it. Um, my only issue with the submission pet match part is that I don't think really either of these guys are known for their submissions. Like I know Austin Aries has submissions. Neville really doesn't. Uh, so since he turned heel weird... and he's gra- grounded his style, he's been using the rings of Saturn a lot. It was one of those, like, when you turn heel, you take all the exciting stuff out of your arsenal, so the crowd boos you, so the crowd doesn't cheer you so much. So he's mm-hmm. really, like, he's got, like, a modified Rings of Saturn that he's been using quite a bit, and, and Austin Aries has been using the last Chancery since TNA. Right. Um, so, well, though, they're not they're submission not, specialists. like they've ever been known for their submissions. No, it's, it's like every wrestler, really. Like, John Cena has a submission move, technically, but... You know, I think every wrestler has to have one impact move and one finishing or and one submission move just in case they get thrown in a match like this. No, neither one of them are submission specialists by any stretch of the imagination. It's not like Angle Benoit type shit. But the the action leading up into it, I think it's gonna be I think it's gonna be one of those scenarios where WWE thinks we're gonna be surprised where it's like, Oh, they're cruiserweights, they fly around, da 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 and then it's gonna end up being a brawl. I want it to be a brawl between these two. I'd be okay with that. And TJ Perkins is going to be involved, obviously. Um, yes. He's, he's, he's doing that weird, like, mentor-sensei thing with um, with Neville. Can we talk about the fact that he fell victim to the WWE name thief, and he's just TJP now? And it's dumb. Like, a whole lot. <laughs> Yeah, for whatever reason, if you look at all the roster on NXT, and then when they get moved to the main roster, for whatever reason, they lose one of their names. Only only if it's NXT-created names, though. Because everybody that's, like, <coughs> kept their name from somewhere else, like CM Punk's never, name never got changed, AJ Styles, Samoa Joe, I doubt Bobby Austin Rubio, Aries. Austin Aries, prime example... Kevin but, Owens didn't lose his name, and it's an NXT made name. Yeah, but it's take off of Kevin Cena. What are you just going to call him, Kevin? Who is he, Bailey? Yeah, I know. Finn yeah. Balor. Hey, okay, Finn wait, wait, wait. Well, I shouldn't either. say that because look at Cody in uh, ROH. Just Cody. Just Cody. But he's WWE the uh, American Nightmare. Nightmare. Because WWE are dicks and take your name away. Um, yeah. I will say, uh, we were talking about Nia Jax earlier, uh, about her rant, which we're going to talk about <clears throat> in a little bit, but, um, apparently, if you follow Austin Aries on Twitter, apparently the Cruiserweight Championship match is not included if you go out and buy the Blu-ray of WrestleMania. What? I did not know that. Yeah. That yeah. is some BS. Although, WrestleMania is like eight hours long. Still, though. I know. Oh, I know. It's stupid. There's some other shit you definitely could have cut out of that. Um, I just thought it was like, why? Why? Like, you just revamped this Cruiserweight division. It's the first time it's had a presence at WrestleMania, and you're going to cut it out. But, um, yeah, it's fucking dumb. Anyways. I mean, I'm pretty sure they could have edited out a lot of, like, The Undertaker walking. (laughs) Yeah, that... They yeah, popped they him up in the middle of the ramp. Undertaker's entrance and had a whole other match. <laughs> uh, oh, that's just just wow. Anyways, come on, no... that is you know that is true. Don't even be like, Ugh. I know he's earned it, so it's completely understandable. But Undertaker had like it felt like a fifteen minute long inter- uh, entrance, and he came up halfway down the ramp. Yep. <laughs> 
Anyways, I got nothing else to say. It, but still. Austin Aries has to win this. Like they've done, they've. This is about their third or fourth round now. If he loses again, he's just going to be out of the picture, and I don't see that happening. And I think Agreed. I, I I can't put a finger on why I think this exactly. I think in rest like as far as wrestling fans in general, more people know who Austin Aries is than Neville, and I think it'll do good for the belt, not so much for him himself. So I got Aries at five. I've got Aries at six. I also have Aries at five. I'd be interested to see what y'all's number six is then. Oh, oh yeah. Because literally those first two <coughs> matches are my like I'm real the ones I am most sure, clearly the ones I am most sure about. Everything else, if I could, would give it like a two or three because I'm like I don't fucking know. I think I think there are certain things that Guapo and I agree on, and I think yes. my six might be his six as well. But we'll Possibly. See, we'll get there when we get there. I'm cur- I'm curious. Okay, we'll get there. <laughs> It's okay. We're gonna get there. <laughs> um. So my I boys don't have a joke for that. Yeah. Oh, don't. That's right. Just, just let it go. Yeah. Just Anyways, go with it. My boys, the Hardys, guys... are taking on Shame, and I'm not letting you finish it. <laughs> They're taking on Sheamus and Cesaro in a match that they chose. That's a cage match for reasons. So the Hardys, the. The non, Why would the Hardys the non, not choose a ladder match? Just the non-broken, the non-broken Hardys versus Jason Statham and Pirate Chicken. Uh, Kristen, in answer to your question, apparently Vince McMahon thinks we've had too many ladders recently. There's never too many recently. ladders. There's no such thing. And also, when, when was the last ladder match? I'm being completely serious. I'm not. Mania. Takeover. Mania? Oh, Mania. Yeah, we did Champa Gargano versus uh, Authors of Pain at TakeOver like right. two weeks ago. True. And then we got Money in the Bank coming up with two ladder matches, and they're hyping up the first ever women's ladder match. Roddy, Roddy, Roddy. Apparently, Woo. if you read the dirt sheets, I'm going to read Dirt Sheet Dennis here for a second. Apparently, Lana oh, no. and Nikki Bella are petitioning to be involved in that match. Who? Hmm? Lana and Nikki Bella. Well. Well, Lana makes sense. They've been hiding One of these up things for a while. is not like the other. <laughs> One of these things just don't belong. I'm just happy that we're not going to see Naomi at all at the next at the next SmackDown pay per view. I'm I'm fully okay with that. But yeah, the only way I could see them making the cage match make sense, and they didn't play this up like I thought they were going to, because um, the Hardys got to pick the style of match. I thought they were going to do something like. Hey, you know, we could pick a ladder match. We could put it entirely in our favor. But our opponents are, are these big, bad brawlers. We'll give them their kind of match just to show how confident we are. But they, they didn't let that story But play. it's going to be in a hearty compound. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the hearty compound. Oh, man. Uh, I wish. <laughs> Fuck that owl, man. Fuck that owl. Fuck that owl, right? Uh, they're just idiots. Can I just say that they're fucking idiots at this point? Like, it is. But all honestly, if if WWE was just like fuck it, they would do it, pull the trigger, do it, and deal with the repercussions later. It's not even that WWE like because the Hardys have their legal shit with TNA that they're trying to figure out. WWE will not get involved because they will not set the precedent of buying a gimmick from another company because they don't want to give yeah. TNA that much credit. Meanwhile, them not doing that is keeping the fans worldwide from getting what they want from the Hardys. So, kind of fucked up. Not me. Not me. I'm totally okay with that. Yeah, well. It's for selfish reasons. Do you not like fun, Kristen? No, No, I just don't like the idea of buying Nikki Bella merchandise. The problem is... We're talking about the Hardys. I know, but if the broken... I'm going to remind everybody... Of our bed, oh, you guys clearly yes. don't remember. Yeah, oh, I, I remember it. Ass, I could have been asked and not reminded you, but I'm going to. Oh, See, I'm I'll... hoping that it takes long enough that there just won't be any Nikki Bella merch anymore. <laughs> you do realize oh, no, we no, have no, until WrestleMania in 2019. <laughs> <sighs> anyway, uh, you'll, fi- 
if if it comes down to it, we'll find a suitable replacement of merch for you to technically, buy. Technically, our bet was within two years. So all I gotta do is outlast two years. Yeah, but it was within two years of the Mania preview, which is WrestleMania, which is WrestleMania 2019. Yeah, I know. Okay, we're good. Um. Any anyway, uh, like I was saying, uh. Shit, I don't know what I was saying. All right, fuck it. Let's go on. I don't know. Much as you guys will probably be surprised at this, I'm actually picking Sheamus and Cesaro at four. Huh. Well. I am picking the Hardys at one, which shows how little I'm like, I have no fucking idea. Just because I don't know what the fuck WWE is doing right now, I'm just going to say Sheamus and Cesaro, but at four. I, um... (laughs) I, uh, the reason, I, I don't know, this feud has confused me, because I feel like the Hardys haven't gotten all that much, like, airtime. They just show up and react to whatever Cesaro and Sheamus are saying. Yeah. But they don't actually, like, make any promos or anything like that. Well, well the thing is, like, outside, that. outside of, like, the broken gimmick, the Hardys have never been good. The Hardys were never good on the mic until they did the heart, the Broken Hardys gimmick. Like outside of it. But I'm not. But I'm not wrong, right? No. If I miss something, where they just show up and like react to whatever Cesaro and Sheamus are saying. Pretty much, and they just show up and do shit, which is kind of what, like, in their heyday, what they did. So it's not far off. Like I don't. I guess we. I don't notice it as much. Because, like, in their heyday in WWE, they never really did say very much. Like, they okay. always did just kind of show up and get their shit done. Like, because they were always working with, like, the Dudleys, who were, like, super aggressive and violent and kind of okay on the mic, and Edge and Christian, who were hilarious on the mic. Yes. But, uh... Yes. And Sheamus and Cesaro are not that great on the mic either, so... That part yeah. of it's kind of downhill. I don't know, like, match-wise, I think they, they've been doing good shit. I like the team of Sheamus and Cesaro. I like them ten times better since they went heel. Mm-hmm. The entrance is still weird, but whatever. Anyways, Guapo and my match of the night. Alexa Bliss on my pole match. I mean, kendo stick on a pole match. You don't even deserve a boo for that one. I deserve Alexa Bliss. Anyways, moving on. And then um, you would have to fight have Guapo dibs. for her. Already called dibs. Yeah. But you're engaged, so disqualified. Still dibs. No, disqualified. Nope. Now, see, now, dibs. look, look at the... Br- his, look. She's his cheat. Guapo, look at the pressure you put on me now. You're engaged, which means you're spoken for. Now I gotta handle, you know, the goddess Alexa Bliss and Hot Heel Emma. I don't know what I'm gonna do with myself. He can still have dibs. They're allowed... Thought- Oh they have a cheat. They have a cheat. They have yeah. a wh- what's it called? It's not one, called a cheat. Hall pass. Uh, one, one celebrity. Uh, one celebrity hall pass. Hall pass. There you go. Okay. He has a hall pass. Can I just say that like how on point Alexa Bliss is as a heel <laughs> is just underlining how weak Bailey is as a face on the main roster. I, I yeah. had I. I had this suspicion whenever Bailey was on NXT that the gimmick, uh, if not done properly, would be this, which is essentially that Bailey is in the exact same storyline all the time, which is that, you know, Bailey's too nice, so she can't do blank. Which is literally the whole, like, it's extreme rules and Bailey can't get extreme. Exactly. What I'm saying. That's exactly what I'm saying. Like, Every every feud that she's in is like Bailey's like she's like a small child. Yeah, but they're actually making her act like a child, which is super awkward. Especially I, I when knew back the gimmick had its weakness back then. Yeah, but like especially like not so much now because now you got Kurt Angle in there and he's sort of being like sort of very neutral type GM. But when you had Mick Foley in there and he was trying to be like the overprotective dad character to Bailey, like the whole, I mm-hmm. think that I think her interaction with Mick Foley more than anything else sort of solidified this like awkward like yeah she is playing the role of a fan not a wrestler 
Which is not the case. I mean, we know she can go in the ring. She showed it in NXT, but it's not shining through at all. And Alexa Bliss... Alexa Bliss's character is just built for a no-disqualification match. Well, and... And also, like, because this Bailey storyline has happened so many times, I feel like... the had she not had this feud before, essentially with every other, with Charlotte, however many times, I think the you know, oh she's nice sweet little Bailey, would would work in this feud because Alexa Bliss's character is like the big mega bitch character, and she's so good. And, yeah. Like she's not. I, I will say this: Alexa Bliss is not the best female wrestler on the roster. But she is leaps and bounds the best female character they have. Agreed. Uh, my my thing is, I think Bailey, the this character that we have with Bailey is running, it's running into a wall because there's no place for it to grow or expand because it's this. I mean, it's the female John Cena syndrome, basically. Yeah, but people want John Cena to turn heel because we know it could happen. Like, right now, if they tried to turn Bailey heel, I think that would fail even more because nobody would believe it. The, I feel like part of her problem was she won the title too quickly. I think this Bailey is so sweet, Bailey's like the fan, blah, 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 would have worked better had we not. Had we not had the satisfaction of her winning the title. When she won the title in NXT, she had literally, like, tried and tried and tried and tried. And then kept failing at these, like, either number one contender matches or title matches. And just couldn't get the job done. And then finally, the storyline of her just saying, well, I'm just going to fight everybody. And then that way, you know... And I'm um, sorry, like her last enough feud to be able to get to the title, and then when she beat Sasha Banks, it was like, you know, was, we got that satisfaction at the end of her finally were, winning. But they were able to maintain it too. Like I think the other sad thing about this is, yeah, like we saw the flaws in the Bailey character in NXT. Like the Bailey character in NXT drove me a little bit nuts too, for the same reasons. But towards the end, like you saw the great matches with her and Sasha Banks. Uh, but towards the end of her tenure in NXT, she did. In her own way, like, I have to be careful how I say this, uh, but, like, in her own way, she did become a badass in her last feud with Asuka before she came to the main roster. And then yes. she totally regressed as soon as she hit the main roster. Well, and what I feel like helped also in NXT is because because there, there's only, like, three or four matches on NXT, yeah. you can't showcase every feud every time. On every NXT, yeah, on they'll, every they'll, NXT, they'll do a full show where they're like mostly boosting the cruiserweight division, or not the cruiserweight, but the uh, NXT heavyweight division, and then they'll focus on tag teams the next week, and then they'll do a little bit more with the women the following week. And now, now that they've sort of adopted the uh, UK title as their smaller title, I guess you could say, uh, there's sometimes mm-hmm. where they focus just on that. Like, look at uh, tonight, you had Pete Dunne and uh, and Danny Birch. From the UK division as one of the main matches on NXT tonight. Because of that, you didn't see Bobby Roode, you didn't see Asuka, you didn't see the Authors of Pain. You'll see Bobby Roode next week. Two weeks from now, we're getting a triple threat women's match. Like they, they're able to spread it out more. But even still, like I don't know. It's just it's because Raw is three hours. They have an oversaturation problem when it comes to almost all of their feuds. Yeah, but the way they're letting Bailey go stale, I think we would have the same reaction even if we were only seeing her every other week or every two weeks or, or whatever the case may be. It's just like they took her to a high point in NXT and then they brought in Bailey from the beginning of her NXT run to Raw. And I don't think it's going to work. They're not going to make her a badass because there's too many other women in the division that they're trying to portray as the badass. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, freaking Alexa, um, Alexa Bliss is the super heel. Uh, Sasha Banks is the cool baby face, and Alicia Fox is sort of like the crazy tweener, and these are all like really out there, extreme, over-the-top gimmicks. You have to have this one that's sort of laid back, 
but like uh, Guapo said a second ago, or maybe maybe it was you saying she's sort of like the John Cena of the women's division, which I don't even think is true because we know John Cena can ramp it up. We know John Cena can, you know, get down and nasty in a match. We know John Cena can get aggressive with people and get sick and, and get pissed off with people and whatever. We don't know that from Bailey because she's just like smiling with the streamers and the balloons and just happy to be there, and that's kind of ominous. If I, I'm totally honest with you. Yeah. I'm I'm also, going to be pissed if she if Bailey wins on Sunday. Also, Bailey gimmick aside, the Kendo stick on a pole match is just stupid. Yeah, they could have just made it an Extreme Rules match, or like just a generic like no DQ match. They could have even just made it a Kendo stick match. <coughs> They've done that before. Yeah, but then you just get into the whole chairs that's still, match that's thing. That still would have been that still would have been like dumb, but it would have been less dumb than a kendo stick on a pole match. Isn't the point of getting the kendo stick on the pole, me, of any whatever on a pole match, is that you win when you get the whatever on a pole? Yeah. So doesn't that not lend to the fact that they won't even really need to be getting extreme? Because yeah. as soon as they get, get the kendo stick, they win, right? It, Somebody... Am I, like, stupid? Do I forget how on a pole matches work? Uh, there is the odd occasion where it is just grab the weapon and you can use it. It's kind of similar to the, um, when we talk about steel cage matches, like we talk about, like, Hardys and Sheamus and Cesaro where they have a cage match, right? There are, have been times where it's been escape the cage only, and there's been times where you've been able to win by pin or submission as well. It's the same thing with the anything on a pole match. Sometimes it's, like, what you get to win, like the, uh, what's a good example? Like, uh... Eddie Guerrero, Rey Mysterio, when they had the, the custody of Dominic paper on a pole match, like, you got the clipboard to win, because you're not going to use the clipboard as a weapon. Uh, but if you had, like, a steel pipe on a pole match or whatever, obviously the steel pipe's a weapon. The crowd pop is going to be when you use that weapon. Uh, a couple people have been saying, like, if they do want to... And I kind of agree with this, to be quite honest with you, but the whole, um, if they want to make Bailey come off as a badass... Have her lose, have Alexa Bliss attack her with the kendo stick after the match, and sort of do the Tommy Dreamer, uh, thank you sir, may I have another thing? Like, okay, yeah, what do you got? Let her, mm -hmm. let her take a shot and do it. And if they do a moment like that after the match, it could be a cool moment. It won't be anything like the Tommy Dreamer scenario, but... Um, if she wants to have a moment where she shows how resilient she is after losing... I would be okay with that, because I don't think she should win, I do think she needs something to develop her character, and that would that would do both of those things. I don't think WWE is going to do that, though. I, I agree. I don't think, uh, I don't think she's going to win. No. So I'm, I got Bliss at three. Uh, I have Bliss at two. I have Bliss at two. There's not nearly as much conflict this time around. I don't like this at all. Nope. We have the same we're pick. All, we're all in agreement that this, the premise of this match is stupid. Yeah. Oh, I'm just looking at all of, our, all of our picks so far. Uh, the only thing we differ on is the tag team match so far. Okay. Another extreme match. Miz versus Dean Ambrose. Essentially, the stipulation is Dean Ambrose has no championship advantage, so the title can change hands via pinfall or disqualification. Then there was a long pause. Yeah, Miz is winning. Like, <laughs> yeah, for a couple I agree. Of reasons. There's like no way Miz isn't going to win with some sort of interference. He's, I think he'll win by doing something shitty, like somehow getting Dean Ambrose like disqualified. Yeah, the, uh, he yeah, Dean Ambrose is going to win, lose by disqualification, but it's going to be because of Elias Samson. Uh, yeah. Because the, when I, Dean Ambrose had his is, Dean Ambrose fought Elias Samson in his debut, the Miz came out, hit Elias Samson, so that Dean Ambrose would lose by disqualification. This week, Elias Sampson comes out talking about Miz and how he owes him a favor in a match that the Miz can win his title by disqualification. He's going to win. 
Now, behind the scenes, I'm sorry, I'm not shitting on Dean Ambrose. He sucks as IC champion. Miz is well, great as the IC champion. There's way too many baby faces that want to go for that title. Um, Miz and the IC title go hand in hand. I don't know why they put it back on Ambrose at all. He just he doesn't need it. I feel like he did a better job being the the WWE champion. I feel like his character persona of I'm gonna be a fighting champion. I'll fight whoever, whenever. His character, I feel like, leans more that that aligns better with a bigger title than the IC title, and he doesn't need the IC title. But this Dean is Ambrose my point, and this is this is where I think the Miz works title. great, and I think this is where they totally gave Miz a rebirth on SmackDown, because no, he doesn't need the IC title, but the IC title needs him, and his yes. whole character, his whole character is not I'm so proud to be champion. It's, look how much better this championship looks when I hold it. He knows that he's elevating that belt. And he doesn't, he's not using the belt to elevate himself. He's boasting about how he elevates the title. So no, he's not going for the world championship right now, because that's with Brock Lesnar, and that would be really funny. But Dean Ambrose said it a couple weeks ago, like, Brock Lesnar's never there. So essentially, the IC title is the number one title on SmackDown. Or on Raw, rather. And plus, like, in the past four weeks, look at the people that have sort of been sort of in and out of that circle. You've had The Miz, you've had Dean Ambrose, you've had Finn Balor, Samoa Joe, Bray Wyatt, uh, Seth Rollins. Those are all the people we tune into Raw to watch, and they're all going for the IC belt. If you can play that up a little bit more, you got a lot of popular people there that could go for Miz's head and that championship. He's the perfect guy to sit there in the catbird seat and smile at all these popular guys that he's going to rip the hearts out of all the fans every time one of their friends, uh, one of their favorites loses. Miz, Miz takes it. I, <laughs> I got nothing. Uh, I agree. Miz, Miz is going to win this, and like, like you said, probably an interference where Dean Ambrose gets, uh, gets DQ'd. Uh, I'd forgotten this little side thing with Elias Sampson that sounds like it's a, that that's probably going to be it. But, I mean, I have a problem with the premise of this match anyways because literally this match could be The Miz could get his wife to come up and slap him, and that's a disqualification for Dean Ambrose. And, see, that would be my prediction if they hadn't set the seeds for the thing with Elias Sampson. I will say... As much as I hate the Drifter gimmick, uh, the little bit that he's been on Raw so far, he's really kicked it up in the ring as well. Like, he's actually mm -hmm. owning, he's owning people in the ring. He's still doing the weird, I'm going to sing but not really sing, and, and I'm going to piss people off with my bad singing, which is, I, I mean, it is what it is. But it's like Breezango. Breezango's gimmick is going into the toilet, but they're still an amazing team in the ring. So I'm really... It's, I think the Drifter might fall into that Baron Corbin category where I actually like him better on the main roster than I did in NXT. Uh, I don't know. I'm Guapo's being very quiet. <laughs> well, well, what was your... Uh, you picked uh, Miz. What was your rank for that? I got Miz at six. All right, well... Uh, yeah, well, guess me and Spaz are thinking lucky here yeah, because I there also we go. have Miz at six. <laughs> I, knew I it. have a, I have Miz at four. <laughs> I feel like we've all picked the same people to win, just at different, like, levels. We're, we're different, well, as, we're different as soon as you were like, oh my god, I can't wait to see what you guys have at six, I'm like, Guapo's gonna have the Miz, I'm gonna have the Miz. Yep. It, it is what it is. I'm telling you, man, That's Miz... The only one. Miz and Bliss were the two biggest success stories on SmackDown after the brand split, and they're still now they're two of the best things on Raw. Along with, we knew that was going to be along with Braun Strowman, who's injured, which sucks. Yes, Braun. I miss Braun. <laughs> you know who else misses Braun? Everybody else that got thrown into this five way with Roman Reigns. Yep. Roman Reigns versus Finn Balor versus Bray Wyatt versus Seth Rollins versus Samoa Joe. Extreme fatal five-way for the number one contendership to face Brock Lesnar at 
great balls of fire. Is that really the name of the pay-per-view? Yes. Did you not know this? No. The next <laughs> Raw pay-per-view is Great Balls of Fire. I could have lived without knowing that. <laughs> okay, Guapo, talk for a second, because I'm going to find something and send it to Justin. Uh, yeah, Great Balls of Fire is going to be a complete and utter shit show other than the main event, which is going to be great because... The person who I'm picking for to win this match is going to get his ass obliterated, and then we're going to have to sit and watch Brock Lesnar be the champion up until SummerSlam. I feel like this will be the first one we all differ on. No. Well, yeah, probably. No, because I don't like my choice. I'm just, I see it coming. Oh, I, I hate well, my choice, but I know that's what's going to happen since well, Brock's hurt. My choice is going to sound like this is the person I want to win, but I actually have justification of why I think he's going to. Kristen, do me a favor. Yes. Look at Facebook Messenger. All right, hang on. I'm going to hate this, aren't I? Yeah, you are. <laughs> anyway, talk about something until I react. No, we're waiting this. for you now. Well, uh... Whenever uh, I listened, I was listening to the uh, Taz show. Mm -hmm. Whenever they were talking about the Great Balls of Fire uh, pay per view, and Lord, 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 the gimmick was what real. An awful they were running the game because God, that's fucking. It, could they pick anything else? Like you look, any an other name? What an awful names? fucking logo. You know what? You know what I find funny about the Great Balls of Fire thing, and I, I, we're going to talk about this in a month. I'm sure of it. But WWE went to all the trouble to dig out the old pay per view name Bad Blood and trademark it and renew the trademark in 2017, and then decided, screw it, we're going to call it Great Balls of Fire. Yep. Anyways, so my theory on this. There you go. I sent you a picture back. I need you to see it. That's very classy. <laughs> I could say something incredibly Hello oh, Kristen um, There's a classy gal like that That looks like six chicks I'll let you figure it out Anyways uh, <coughs> People listening to this are like What the fuck um, Basically me, people People listening, trust me, you don't want to be in this group message. No, you don't. Um, no. Basically, my theory in all this is this was supposed to be Braun Strowman versus Roman Reigns, and Roman Reigns would have gone over, and it's like, okay, Braun Strowman's injured. Let's take these two other potentially good feuds that we have on Raw, use all four guys just to put over Roman Reigns, which is stupid, because Seth Rollins, Samoa Joe should be top tier on your show. I'm sorry, Bray Wyatt versus Finn Balor, which they've stop-started a couple of times now, should be top-tier on your show. These four should not be sacrificed to make Roman Reigns look good, and to just be steamrolled on the way to him getting another world title. I honestly don't think Roman Reigns is going to win. I have justification for this. Hang on. I'm waiting. I don't... I don't think Roman Reigns is going to win because I feel like the whole point... I, I would have totally been with you guys had we not had that segment where Paul Heyman came out for Finn Balor and essentially said that Finn Balor was going to win. That's the thing. They they dangle the shiny thing in front of you. They, it totally it could be. Away. It could be... It could be the shiny... It could be the, oh, look, Finn Balor's gonna win, like, thing that they're look, just dangling in look, front of me. This, you know what this is? This is... This is... You're the fly. You see the shiny light. You're going to the was, shiny light, and you're gonna get zapped, and when you die, is Roman Reigns. You just, wa you just watched a bug's <laughs> life recently, say, didn't you? It was like that commercial... It, that it could entirely you got be... Got you a dollar. Commercial, yes, I got you a dollar. Ooh, got him oh, bigger you than that. Yes. You went quite that, fast it enough. Totally, <laughs> it totally could be that, but I feel like they haven't really been doing much with Roman Reigns, and so I just, I don't feel like he's, I, they haven't been showcasing him at all. Which is why but he's going to win. 
I don't think he's going to win. Think about the Royal Rumble. Right. Think in about the my Royal mind, in my mind, Bal- Balor is the clear choice of winning here. I have him. I have Balor winning at three. I'm not as confident about it, but I have Balor at three. Balor at three. All right. I have. Think about Roman okay, Reigns at three. <laughs> I got Roman at one. Well, Here, see, even you though. guys aren't even that sure. When. Yeah, but when think uh, my my example is is the Royal Rumble. What do they do at the Royal before the Royal Rumble? They always pick a couple of guys. They 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 put a focus on the big show for reasons. They put a focus on Mark Henry for reasons. They put a focus on Kane and his and his record breaking thing in the Royal Rumble for reasons, which is fantastic. Except you know those guys aren't going to win. Roman Reigns, to your point hasn't been focused on, that's why he's winning. The other yep. four guys and in the other four guys in this match all have feuds that they're currently involved in. Sort of. Sort of. No, they do. Seth Rollins and Samoa Joe haven't finished and Well no, that that one's definitely a feud. I the sort of is really for Finn Balor, Bray Wyatt, which I still want. I mean if we get if if Roman Reigns winning means that Finn Balor and Bray Wyatt will have a feud. I mean, I'm not going to be happy about Roman Reigns versus Brock Lesnar, like, no. at all, but if we get that, I could be less, I could be at least okay with it. I have that in mind. Not because I'm, a, not cause I'm okay with the match, but because I want that. I honestly wouldn't mind... Roman taking the belt off of Brock. Not because I want Roman to be champion, but because, honestly, don't ask me why, I want to see Balor versus Reigns for the title. I think everybody everybody thinks uh, Finn Balor versus Brock Lesnar is a great idea. I, think I don't it, think it's a great idea. But I think it could be I, shit. And I yeah. think, like, I'm sorry, Finn Balor has had a few injuries, a few very recent injuries, and Brock Lesnar doesn't give a shit. Let's be real for a second. Um, Nobody really cares about Brock Lesnar, because Brock Lesnar shows up and he does what he does. You get a champion, even if it is Roman Reigns, um, that's there every week. Let Roman be there every week with the title, everybody getting on Twitter and social media and setting their keyboards on fire, talking about how sick they are of Roman Reigns, Finn Balor would get cheered a lot more for getting that belt off of Reigns than he would for getting it off of Brock. Because whether you, like, Brock Lesnar's one of those guys, whether you like him or not is kind of irrelevant. When he shows up, something kick-ass is going to happen. Balor beats him? Okay, cool. Awesome moment for Finn Balor, for sure. But, they like, you want to have what Braun Strowman has right now. You want to have him walk into Raw the next night with everybody chanting, Thank you, Balor. Because not only did he get the title that he never lost, he took it off of somebody that we hated having it. And I think that would get a lot more heat behind him. Here is is my reasoning why I want uh, Finn Balor to go up against Brock Lesnar. Not because I necessarily think it would be, like, you know, the greatest match ever. But I feel like with how long Finn's been gone and... Uh, And, you know, Brock being the conqueror, the beast incarnate and everything, that it is a great way to reintroduce uh, Demon Finn Balor without any of that stupid Demon King bullshit nonsense that that they did whenever they introduced the Demon with Seth Rollins. I feel like it's a great way to reintroduce that and get that part of his persona back what? How do you beat the Beast Incarnate? You become the Demon. Fair. My and other my other answer why is. I want him to fr- that. Oh. My other answer okay. is have a have a bullshit ending. If you're not gonna have Roman win, which I think he will, and I've already my, said uh, that. My uh, my headset came out, so I didn't hear that first part. I I well I didn't really say anything. If you don't have Roman win, which I think is going to happen. 
You have some sort of thing where the match comes down to Finn Balor and Seth Rollins. You have the commentators reminding us that this is, you know, this was the original match right here for the Universal Championship. History repeating itself, blah, 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 blah. Have Seth Rollins win, but have Seth Rollins win in some, like, really cheap way. Have it where they're both at the top of the ladder, you know, the tension is building, they've both got their hand on the belt, Rollins reaches over with a low blow. Something like that. Rollins has his match against Brock Lesnar at Great Balls. Kurt Angle comes out the next night and says, hey, you've got your title shot, but, you know, you kind of fucked over Balor here. I'm going to give him a chance for some retribution. If he can beat you tonight on Raw, it's a triple threat. Balor, Rollins, Lesnar at Great Balls. Like I said, I want uh, Finn Balor to win, not because I feel like Balor versus Lesnar is going to be the greatest match ever, but I feel like Brock Lesnar is the best opportunity to reintroduce the demon character without it being fucking cartoony. And see, I want to save that for how good I think the feud will be with Bray Wyatt, because you get the two evil forces going. You get the whole, like, it's not the you're same. You're right, it could, it could work with, you're right, it could totally work with yeah. uh, Wyatt, too. Because it's, do, uh, yeah. it's not, and I'm not putting it on the same level, so don't get me wrong, but, like, think yeah. Kane versus Undertaker. Mm-hmm. Because um, you either have to draw the distinct difference that you're drawing, where you've got, like, one totally, like, indestructible athlete versus this Enigma thing over here, or you have two dark forces going at each other. Because um, I think, I think they can, because he already has the notoriety of being the first ever... Uh, Universal Champion, I think they can slow build him to picking up that title at a bigger pay-per-view, like a SummerSlam or oh, a Survivor I, Series. I would much prefer it would be like Finn Balor versus Brock Lesnar at a SummerSlam, but like I said, I, I am doing it for selfish reasons because I like the Demon character, and I didn't like how they introduced it last time because it was fucking cartoony. And I almost feel like an, if they don't do it right with Bray Wyatt, if he ha does it with Bray Wyatt, that it could come off cartoony there, too. Like, I totally see, like, a backstage promo thing where they make the demon, like, fucking cartoony, like, for Bray Wyatt. But I also see a scenario where... You have Bray Wyatt doing his Bray Wyatt promo in the dark and everything, and, and you know, there's a vague light in the background, and as he's doing this promo, you just, as he, like, walks off camera, and he never notices, you see this, you see this vague image of Finn Balor in the face paint demon mask. And, demon. And, and, all, and all he does is give, like, a lean and a look to the camera, and he doesn't even have to say anything. Exactly. Nothing. Because I will say, like, the whole the whole image of the whole demon Finn Balor thing is awesome. The way that Finn Balor cuts a promo doesn't go with the with the demon. Like, the demon shouldn't oh, no, the, talk. The demon should not talk. Like, rock star douchebag Finn Balor can cut a promo all day. But... The demon should not give promos. The demon is just... The demon is the Undertaker, not on the mic. He is just a presence. Yeah. And I mean, and this is again why I say, like, if they're going to go that direction, like, I, I would say, like, if they did Balor Club, and if Bray Wyatt still had the Wyatt family, then okay, yeah, have Rockstar Douchebag Finn Balor, have him cut a promo on Bray Wyatt, have them do, like, the three-on-three -three thing, but because we don't have that anymore, have it where he's just there, have it where he's just there absorbing, sort of like, you know, you know when somebody's talking to you a whole lot and you sort of tilt your head while they're talking, and it just sort of drives them nuts because you don't actually give them anything back? Have Wyatt carry the feud on the mic, since we know he can, uh, and and Finn Balor be the opposite of that. It'd be like, you know, he doesn't say anything, he doesn't do anything, we don't know what's in his head, and that's what drives Bray Wyatt even more crazy. Yes, the, uh, the, the demon gimmick should not... I've always said this, the demon gimmick is a last resort. It is a, yeah. it is a an entity, a, a presence, a persona that Finn Balor takes on whenever he just needs that extra, like, I see it as, like, if you're in a long-term feud, say this is the third time you face somebody, yeah. this is this is the gimmick you have, this is the persona he pulls from, 
to give him that extra edge. It is not a thing that happens every pay-per-view, or it shouldn't be a thing that happens every pay-per-view. It shouldn't be a thing that happens at a lot of pay-per-views. It's just that extra dimension that he pulls from in absolute situations, like maybe a, a, uh, a extreme match or like a cage match. WrestleMania. In like, yeah, WrestleMania, like big match. Yeah. Feud ending matches. Kind of like 99% of the time, Iron Man's good enough. 1% of the time, you got to bring out the Hulkbuster. Exactly. It's, it's, he's the Hulkbuster armor. The demon is the Hulkbuster armor of WWE. There we go. You don't use that shit all the time. <laughs> And she comes out in one scene in one movie, and it was the best part of the movie. <laughs> well, maybe. It's another story for another day. Anyways, <laughs> Guapo, you're quiet over there, buddy. Yeah, no, I'm just... I don't like to interrupt Kristen. She scares me. <laughs> Especially when she's talking about Finn. Hey, yeah. I know, it's, it's a very... You don't... You don't you don't interrupt me when I'm talking about Bay. Of course not. Oh, Look, Finn, I dressed up like you. Oh, that's not Super creepy. Fucking... <laughs> have I to... Only, have only I... in the wrestling yes. community is that not creepy as fuck. Look, Finn, well, no. I made a little figurine of you. It was, it's, it was, it was a lot. It was a joke. Like <laughs> I was making those little like pop vinyl figurines, and I made one of Finn Balor because I thought it would be cool when I was starting to make them. And then you know, for that Halloween, I also like dressed up like Finn Balor, and our friend and our friend Abby, who does the makeup, she added it to her like portfolio and everything. And I just had a moment where I was hanging out with uh, with Guapo, and I'm like, from his point of view, not knowing fucking anything about me other than what I tweet at him, I look like I'm fucking stalker bitch crazy. <laughs> look, Finn, I dressed up like you. <laughs> I have a little figurine of you. <laughs> like, Didn't he even so retweet you? Weird. He did, but he retweeted everyone that night. And not that that makes my dress up of Finn Bauer less significant than he retweeted me, but he did retweet I, I'm sure he's more comfortable knowing that you're one of many stalkers. <laughs> he, he calls them his fans. <laughs> or his fins. His fins. <laughs> or part of the Ballard Club, man. Hey, oh, Lord. What's up, boss? It's, you know what's nice for me, though, is that I'm finally, like, super into a wrestler that I know is actually going to go places in WWE. Because for the longest time, like, my, my dude was Evan Bourne, who we oh. really knew was not fucking going anywhere. And then there was, who was the South African guy that was part of... Oh, Justin Gabriel. Uh, TJ Black. Justin Gabriel, too. <laughs> I don't know. He, he he was he was the WWE wrestlers. Unlike my uh, real life attractions, I'm just attracted to like nobodies. Oh wow, wow! Can you not say that about Evan Bourne and Justin Gabriel? Come on! I don't know, man. Justin Gabriel was the Global Force Wrestling Next Gen Champion. The who's a what a huh? Jeff Jarrett's little side hand job project. You mean TNA? <laughs> wow. Wow, that came right out, didn't it, Guapo? <laughs> hey. What, what the fuck you did you just send me? What, what, okay, nobody's going to know what's going on because nobody else can see this, but Guapo, why does Finn Balor look scared of you? Because I'm <laughs> obviously bigger than him. <laughs> Timber! <laughs> You are taller than Finn Balor. Yes, I am. I uh, I will never probably meet Finn Balor. I will probably be way too nervous at the idea he's, of meeting him. He's extremely and cool. I, I'm sure he is. And Kristen, I, by uh, the time you meet Finn on. Balor, he'll be the next cruiserweight champion. Aww. <laughs> well, I also have literal nightmares at the idea that I'm going to go to, like, a wizard world with uh, Guapo and Suave, and they're gonna be total fucking dicks when I go to meet Finn Balor and be like, 
Look, say shit I, that they are gonna embarrass me. Is what I'm is what I'm saying. Okay, but I let's let's just say though, bitch. equal chance you might embarrass yourself. Oh, I'll totally embarrass. If I embarrass myself, that's fine. If they embarrass me, I ha- may have to murder them. Worth it. <laughs> that's not drastic or anything. <laughs> Anyways. Anything else we want to say about this show other than please let's just skip it and get to Money in the Bank? Oh, we should talk about the biggest news story on Raw right now that may or may not be added to this show by Sunday night. Uh, Gold, uh, Gold Dust versus R Truth. Who? <laughs> Gold Dust versus R Truth. Yeah, Golden Truth broke up. Yeah, the the amount of fucks I give it are like an all time zero. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, I agree. Zero fucks are given. Guapo. Well, no, uh, no one gold cares. Dust a, gold dust is a uh, solid. No one cares. Like, well, gold dust is a solid in ring worker, but to be like bitchy and and blatantly like, and and very blunt about it. The only time anybody has even thought about caring about a gold dust feud in this last in in recent memory is the possibility of when he was going to feud with Cody Rhodes. No, 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 <sighs> Cody. Cody. Just Cody. Cody. Yes, just just Cody. just Cody. Sorry. If he if he if they if he gets a graphic in ROH or wherever the hell he is now that says just Cody, I'd laugh. Oh, I, I'm going to date myself with this reference, but uh, every time you say just Cody, it makes me think of Will and Grace and just Jack. Okay, you're on your own on that one, because I don't think we <laughs> Yeah, I know, I dated you're, myself. You're, to- that's you're, fine. Yeah. you're totally, uh, that's, that's all you. That's all you. That's uh, well, that makes me giggle. Anybody oh. else that knows, it will make them giggle too. If this match happens, I don't know. I mean, I don't think Vince McMahon would do this. I mean, obviously, I know Vince McMahon. Uh, <laughs> Clearly. No, she doesn't get the gimmick. She doesn't get the joke. <laughs> no, she doesn't get the... She's not running the game. She's uh, not running no. the game. <laughs> uh, uh, first time, long time? <laughs> <laughs> right in the end, back. <laughs> You guys are done. <laughs> I think we've been done for a while. I think we've just been rambling, because that's what usually happens on these videos. Is there anything actually of substance left to say about this shitty, shitty show? Uh, it's raw, it's so, gonna, you know, it's, it's, I don't it's think what it's it is. Be, uh, I don't think it's going to be shitty, but I don't think it's going to be something we remember. All I'm saying is, I'm happy I'm on night shift, and I'm not going to be watching. <laughs> nice. So you're not going to be paying attention as we keep score? Uh, I'll check Twitter here and there whenever I have decent Ooh. service because when I'm on a boat, I don't have the best service in the world. So I'm on a boat. I'm on a boat. Yes, I'm on a boat. That, that really is, makes that me wonder who else go to work. that's listening to us right now is going to join us in the comment section and actually become part of the game and potentially be running the game. Potentially take Possibly. your potentially take your pay per view pick 'em championship. Um. I will say, and this may be my final thought because we need to get the fuck out of here, but um, it really does say how shitty Raw is that with the particular talent that is on this show, the fact that I'm not excited about it says something about Raw and how they're doing shit. It says something about Raw's creative team and what the fuck they're doing. WWE uncreative? Pretty much. Follow them on Twitter. They got some funny shit. Like, at WWE Uncreative. Uh, my... Look. Here's my one... Here's my one little, uh... My one little, uh, piece in this. If, uh... We can get the championship... The actual champion on the show... At least maybe once a week. Once every two weeks. I think the show can start to get a little bit better. You're talking about Lesnar. Either Lesnar or get the title off... Get the title off of Lesnar and on somebody who's he wants he wants the title on the show I agree I think it's dumb to not have your champion yeah I will say like the one thing and I said this a couple weeks ago when it was when it was happening a little bit more I will say that the lack of Brock Lesnar has 
forced WWE to put a lot more spotlight on the IC title than there has been for a while, but that only excuses it so much. Like I said, all those, all those names that I just rhymed through, like all the names except for Roman Reigns that are involved in this main event, were sort of circling, sort of tap dancing around the IC title a couple of weeks ago. Uh, and to have that many characters that have that much fan support behind them at the moment, um, all looking towards a secondary title, does help it. And I don't think that would happen if the main champion was on every week, but you got to balance that out. Exactly. And wait, quick question. What what uh what pay per view was it that Goldberg won the title off of uh KO? Uh Fastlane? The one before the one right before WrestleMania. Yeah, Fastlane. Yeah. So we haven't had a champ uh physical champion on the show since Fastlane. Well no, because Goldberg That's and Lesnar were on like leading up to WrestleMania, they were uh, Goldberg came on, I think the week after WrestleMania. So after he would six, say that he, he. I think what he means is we have not had a full time champion since. No, correct. KO since lost the title. Correct. Which that that that's the point that frustrates me with this because you have all this talent that has the potential to be great champions and great uh, for the company and we're swaddling them away with uh, part-time people and just not giving the people right. who deserve it No, uh, but, that, but, that's, but that's my I mean, point shit. as well right like you want to put it on a part-time guy or somebody that doesn't like say let's just say that John Cena was on Raw and John Cena comes back beats Lesnar as we know he probably would he gets the title, but he goes off and he's gone for four or five weeks because he's shooting a movie or whatever. Would you care about that as much if you had, um, I don't know, um, The Miz versus Seth Rollins for the IC title main eventing Raw? I I would still care. I don't like the idea of having a part-time champion. I would still care too, but the only difference with that is I know Cena when he comes back he is going to a be on Raw and defend the title or wrestle at least on Raw, being the champion, uh, and not wait for a pay per view to do anything. That's Agreed. Fair. That's fair. Also, I just I just worry that once we're back to having a full time champion, most likely it's going to be somebody we don't want it to be Roman Reigns. Um, he'll be he'll be dominating well, he'll be dominating the show, which will piss everybody off, and it'll push whatever they've done with the IC title in the interim right back off the map. And, like, I don't think they can afford to do that either. Well, your example with uh, with John Cena, too, and, you know, a lot of people aren't going to agree with this, but I feel like the, the people in this call will. Yes. We at least know that, at least to me, I feel like I'm, I would be more okay with, say, part-time John Cena than a part-time Brock Lesnar. Because part-time John Cena, I feel like he's still, like, this isn't a paycheck to him. Like, I feel like he actually still loves WWE. Right. He's still connected. He's still connected to it. I feel like Brock Lesnar is solely here because uh, it's he a paycheck. can't do U- It's a paycheck. He can't do UFC anymore. Right. Okay, but, that, but that's not a full-time, part-time thing. You would still think that about Brock Lesnar, even if he was showing up every four or five weeks to cut a promo. No, no, I uh, I do not. I would not, because I feel like he was, he, he'd be here and engaged. And, like, because Cena has not taken a, a long-term break from WWE. The fact that he's, like, slowly being weaned off as part-time doesn't bother me as much. Whereas when they brought brought Brock Lesnar back, you knew before he even appeared on that first role that he was going to be a part-timer. That he was not going to be here all the time. For I don't know if that makes any sense. For some reason, I feel like Cena part-time, to me, gets more of a pass than Brock Lesnar part-time. I don't know if that makes any sense to you guys, but that's fair. But like, I don't, I don't, I don't want to break your heart. But like, some of the people we watch on a week to week basis might be there week to week. But there could be people that we think are like dedicated as shit 
that are here because it's an easy paycheck and the skills happen to come to them naturally. Like if you found well, out yeah, if you if you found out that, that Finn Balor if you found out that Finn Balor didn't give a fuck and he was with WWE because it was a good ass paycheck, would you care? You'd still like watching him in the ring. I would still like watching him in the ring. And you know to I feel like I have a small suspicion that that's essentially what Dolph Ziggler's doing at this point. Oh, man. I feel so bad for Dolph Ziggler. I really do. But, um, I don't know. Like, I just, over the years, you've, I have heard stories and you hear talk from other wrestlers, other than John Cena, like, you know, fucking people in the back. But huh? even people that don't like John Cena say that he is the first one in, he is the last person to leave. Like, he is he's dedicated to the company. He does all the talk shows. He does all the extra shit. He does all the Make-A-Wish stuff. Like, I feel like he's in it. Right. But, to be fair, um, and I agree with you. Like, don't get me wrong. Yeah. Brock Lesnar walks into the ring. Before he even does or says anything, the crowd immediately knows something badass is about to happen. Like, this without, is with, true. Without exception. There is an element that comes with Brock Lesnar that doesn't come with anybody else. I don't give a shit that he doesn't give a shit. Nobody else on the roster can bring that element right now that Brock Lesnar brings. I agree with that, but I but it still pisses me off to have a part-time champion. Right. And not even, like, a kind of part-time champion. Like, a, we have not seen him, seen his ass since WrestleMania. Yeah, but the the fact that we haven't seen him though is why he gets that reaction when he does show up though. Like that that's the, that, would, that's the catch twenty two of it. He would have that it. reaction without our title sitting on his belt, ga- sitting on his waist, gathering dust, that's not fair. doing anything. That's fair, but for okay, not so much Roman Reigns, but let's look at the other four people in this match coming up this Sunday, right? You got. A Finn Balor, you've got a, a Seth Rollins, you've got a Samoa Joe, you got a Bray Wyatt. Now, whether or not we like what Brock Lesnar is doing right now, for any four of them to say that they walked, if they if they did, to walk into a pay-per-view and say that they beat Brock Lesnar, gives you something that you don't get from any other superstar. And this is true. And as long as he brings that element, I can't shit on him. And part of the reason he's able to bring that element is because we see him so much less, so much less often, right? I I agree with that 100. percent I, 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 like I, I use the I use I use the basket weaver example. This is the example I've used for a long time, right? You are the manager at a basket weaving factory, right? You get paid to produce baskets. Do you want the asshole employee that can make ten a day, or do you want the super nice guy employee that creates four a day? Brock Lesnar making some baskets. Yeah. <laughs> you put Brock Lesnar on a pay-per-view, don't even say what the match is. Don't even say that he's going to be in a match. Great Balls of Fire, coming up in a month. Brock Lesnar's going to be there. That fact alone is going to sell seats. People are buying tickets to Great Balls of Fire right now because they know Brock Lesnar's going to be there. They don't even know who he's facing yet. And, and, I'm, like sorry, said, and I'm sorry to sound like a dickbag WWE <laughs> apologist, but that is a fact. Oh, no, that is a fact, and I agree with that. I just don't like the title sitting on him. He can do all of that still without the title. Yeah. There, there's a John Cena element to it as well, though, because like so for so long, John Cena was the champion, the champion, the champion, so that anybody else that won the championship off of him, it was sort of a twofold thing. It's like, not only am I now the champion, this championship just becomes a symbol of the fact that I beat John Cena. So, take Finn Balor, like your boy, Finn Balor, goes to great balls and beats Brock Lesnar for the championship. Not only is he the world championship, but also that world championship is a physical, visual manifestation of the fact that he beat Brock Lesnar. And that part, that part I can't sneeze at. Like, like to have a fit, like almost a trophy of defeating Brock Lesnar, it means something. And to say that you're c- carrying a belt that Kevin Owens and Brock Lesnar and Goldberg carried does mean something. Like, people shit on the Goldberg comeback and whatever, so did I, but he has a place in wrestling history. Brock Lesnar still has a place in wrestling 
whatever you want to call it. So to carry a belt that they carry, to be the person that took it off of those big names, does get you something. To beat Brock Lesnar at a pay-per-view, great. To beat Brock Lesnar for a championship at a pay-per-view is going to elevate you. I I agree. I, I, I'm, I totally know where you're coming from. I don't always agree that the... I don't think the world champion has to be there every week. Because you do have to let the no. other titles breathe and let the other stories breathe. And I think the one brief shining moment of Brock Lesnar taking the title and fucking off is I firmly believe that the IC title does look a bit better now. But, um, yeah, the Brock Lesnar thing is an anomaly. Like, there's nothing else in wrestling like Brock Lesnar. So it, it kind of, like, breaks all the rules. Like, if Cena won the title and fucked off, like I said a moment ago, I'd be pissed. Because there are other people that are like John Cena. Anyways, where's Guapo? I, I think we lost Guapo. <laughs> yes. Yes. Alright, so that was the preview for Extreme Rules. Guapo, tell them where to find you, buddy. Follow me on Twitter at Guapo underscore 504 on the boats of Louisiana because that's where I work now. <laughs> You're on a boat. Christian, tell them where to find you. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Black Cat Feline. Uh, tweeting about random stuff. Uh, you can find me on Instagram if you like pictures of essentially animals that I happen to be working with. Uh, at, you can find me at Black Cat Feline on Instagram as well. It's mostly pictures of cows recently. Yes, yeah, cows. And cows and dogs. Cows, and, dogs. Uh, that's and, and eventually you'll be on YouTube again, maybe. Um, One yeah, day. Maybe I, uh, on, a, on, a, on a more personal note, I registered, I finally registered for classes, so I'm going back to school in August. So I'm going to be moving to a place with internet. There you go. Yay. So what you're saying is the channel might come back? It, it totally re- might. Re- re- yeah. Wrestle Recap might be a thing again? I know, it might actually be a thing again. If all of you out there are excited about the return of Christian, hashtag return of the cat. Just do it. (laughs) Just do it. Anyways, and you guys know where to find me or you wouldn't be listening to this right now. I've been Spaz, he's been Guapo, she's been Christian. We are your YWC reality check. Subscribe up there, talk down there, start a conversation. Keep all these conversations going. Don't be a stranger. I'll talk to each and every last one of you later. But for right now, me and these guys are tagging out. Bye. Uh, Adios, mis amigos. Bye. Bye.